welcome to Clovey for our Good Friday service. If you'd like to stand, we're going to sing together. And we're going to say thank you, Jesus, for what you did on that cross. For this is amazing grace. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much stronger? The King of glory, the King of love, O oh King. Who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder? Who leaves us breathless in awe and wonder? The King of glory, the King of love, O oh King. Let's sing. This is a
Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. Drenched in tears. 
let's continue to sing. Let's continue to say thank you to Jesus. Thanksgiving to Jesus, right?
run for cover but the miracle that I just can't get over my name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and
that connects to your bigger story for all of humanity. We thank you, Jesus, and we pause today to say thank you for the life that we have in you. Thank you, Lord, for what you did on the cross. Thank you for your death, Lord, your great sacrifice for all humanity. And Lord, we take a moment to say thank you. And wherever we find ourselves in the bigger story of God, whether today's our first time in church or we've been here all of our lives, Lord, where we find ourselves before you, if we're exploring you or if you are our Lord and Saviour, Lord, we take a moment to say thank you for the cross. Thank you for the significance of Good Friday. Thank you, Lord, that you can shape our story and we can have a testimony, we can have a story of your goodness and your faithfulness because of what you did, Jesus, all those years ago on the cross. So today we bless you. Today we say thank you. Today we even maybe courageously and boldly take a step towards you and say, please continue to speak into my life. Please be more of a presence in my life. And if that's you today, just say, God, show more of yourself to me. Jesus, show me more about the importance of the cross and this day, Good Friday. Now we bless you, Lord. We love you. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Why don't you grab your seat? Wherever you find yourself, it's so good that we can be together. We can be worshiping God and be remembering Jesus on this Good Friday. Well, if you're in the room, you might notice we've moved from business class to economy. I apologize for that. People are a lot closer to you. And that is because we're at 75%. Hey, praise the Lord. So we now are at 75% capacity in the room, which is wonderful. And it's okay to be a little bit closer to people, but now you might have to be a bit more selective about who you sit next to. Okay, but that's on you, that's not on us. So have a think about that. But it's great that we can be together, great that we can be worshiping uh, together. And also for those that call Clovey home from next week, you won't need to get Eventbrite uh, tickets to come along on a Sunday. You can just come and QR uh, code, just scan your way in as you come. And that's the way forward uh, for us until uh, maybe, you know, hopefully nothing changes, but we know if things change, we can be on the ready and quick uh, to move on that. But from next week, uh, we uh, don't need to get tickets, just QR code in, and that's going to be our way forward. Well, a big welcome to you. So good that you, you can be uh, with us and that we can be with you, those in the room, those online as well. If it's your first time uh, together uh, with us, then out the doors and to the left is a place called The Point. And we'd love to know who you are and we'd love to get to know you a little bit more. I know there's many people that have been invited by family uh, and friends. And it's so great that you've chosen to be with us today, whether in the room here with us or online. It's so great that you can be with us. If you're online, our little uh, connect button has dropped into the chat. And uh, why don't you hit that and uh, give us uh, some of uh, your details so we can be in contact with you uh, moving forward as well. So if you're in the room uh, with me, we do have a parent lounge uh, up and to the right, and the parent lounge is a place where you can go if you need to. We love that we're an intergenerational church, but we also know that sometimes kids need a bit more space. And uh, if that's you, then you can head up the do out the doors and to your right. It's a parent lounge. It is not a drop and go. It's a play and stay. All right. So just that you're aware of the boundary around that. Uh, if you want to head up there, that's great. That's awesome. But you need to look after your kids as well. Well, as we focus in on uh, Jesus and this man who made a great sacrifice for us. Let me uh, read to you from Philippians 2. You might even want to close your eyes and just reflect on these words from the Apostle Paul to the church in Philippi. He says this, In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who, being the very nature of God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant and being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place 
and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. There's never been a moment you were forgotten, you are not hopeless. Though you've been broken, your innocence stolen, I hear you whisper underneath your breath. Life can be painful, hey? Life can be painful. You know, there's moments where you stub your toe and you're like, ah, oh, this hurts. Or maybe you get pain when you wake up in the morning and there's this spot in your neck that really hurts. Or maybe kids, you fall over in the playground and it hurts. We end up, things hurt. There's pain in life. Maybe a sporting injury or maybe you're getting a bit like me. As you get old, you just wake up with pain some days. You don't know what it is. But we get pain. And not just physical pain. Life means that at times we get emotional pain. Times when things happen that cause us sadness. Maybe a friend is mean to us. Maybe someone lets us down. Maybe someone we love and care about, the relationship is fractured. Maybe a marriage is broken down, a family is broken down. Maybe someone dies someone we love and care about, and there's emotional pain that we carry, that we walk with. Because in life, we all have times of pain. Physical, emotional, psychological pain. The reality is we're all going to face painful experiences. But you know, so often in life, we try to avoid the pain. You know, try to fix the pain, numb the pain, walk away. Maybe if you're anything like me as a mum, you whip out a Band-Aid, because this this is great, this fixes most things. You know, if something's bleeding, whack a Band-Aid on. Even if your kids aren't bleeding, let's be honest, mums, those at home and in the room, there's times we just give a Band-Aid because it works. Just have a Band-Aid, please. <laughs> there's times we try to fix things. I remember when I was a child, my brother and I, if we ever fell over and maybe, you know, scratched our elbow, my mum had a thing called magic cream. And she would have this magic cream in her handbag. So anywhere we went, if we fell over and we scratched our elbow, my mum or any part, my mum would bring out this magic cream. She'd put it on. Oh, my goodness. Everything was okay. And added to which, if she gave me a kiss, oh, my goodness, magic cream and a kiss from mum could fix everything. Am I right? Yeah? 
But you know what? I actually found out later as I got older that it was actually moisturiser cream from Coles that my mum had in her handbag. Just a tip out there, but she called it magic cream and it fixed everything. I wonder though, as we get older in life, as adults, what's the band-aid or the, the magic cream that maybe we use to try and numb the pain, to avoid the pain, to walk away and ignore the pain? You know, the reality is that the World Health Organization has talked about how here, post-COVID, things have changed. We found that with COVID, a lot of the things we would do to escape the pain, we could no longer do. In the restrictions time, there was times we were limited to our homes and we couldn't escape by parties and friends and busyness, but we were confined and maybe for some confined in relationships that were a bit tricky. Maybe without the money and the the income we were used to. In fact, the World Health Organization has said that the pandemic is increasing demand for mental health services. Bereavement, isolation, loss of income and fear are triggering mental health conditions or exacerbating existing ones. There's pain in life. We can't avoid it. It's the reality of what we go through. And I just want to asked us to consider today, this Good Friday, maybe today, rather than putting the Band-Aid on it, rather than trying to avoid it, I wonder instead today if we actually acknowledged pain, acknowledge the pain that maybe some of us online or in the room are sitting in today, acknowledge the pain that our Lord went through as he hung on a cross. Because Good Friday is actually a day when we focus on and remember the pain that Jesus went through, the death, how he hung on a cross for every single one of us. And I wonder if for the next few moments, rather than avoiding pain, if we acknowledged our pain and his pain and even chose to learn in the pain. Because as I look at God in the pain, you know what I notice is that our God is a God who is present in the pain. Our God is with us. He is present in the pain that we experience. We read in the Old Testament, in the Bible, God says in Isaiah, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. God promises to be with us, to be with his people, to not leave. And then this continues when God speaks in Joshua, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. A promise that God is with us, he is present in the pain, in the good and the bad, he is always with us. And then as we continue to read in the Bible, the New Testament, the second part where Jesus walked on this earth, Jesus says in Matthew, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus promises to be with us always. And then we see this in the spirit of God. God's spirit promises to stay with us and journey with us. Jesus says in John, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you. And be with you forever, the spirit of truth. We read throughout scripture, God is with us. He will never leave us, never forsake us. Our God, he's actually present in the pain. He doesn't check out when it gets ugly and tricky and awkward and messy. He's with us. He doesn't just give us a band-aid and hope that it will shut us up. He's with us. He's present no matter what we're going through. He will never leave us and he will never forsake us. But you know, even more than the fact that he is present in the pain, Jesus actually experienced pain. Jesus, although he is fully God, is also fully human. And so when he walked on this earth, he actually experienced pain. He knows what it feels like. See, rather than abandon us, he actually chose to identify with us. He didn't want to abandon us, but he chose to identify with us. We have a God who is present 
and knows what pain feels like. You know, Jesus understands what it's like to be tired and alone. There were times we read in the New Testament where he was exhausted. He was so tired, he wanted to retreat away from people and rest with God, his Father. He knows what that feels like. Do you know, he knows what it's like to be misunderstood, to have people just not understand you, not get you, and maybe overlook you. There were times his followers didn't really understand what he was saying. Even the town where he grew up, they didn't see him for who he really was. They simply saw him as just the carpenter's son. So he knows what it's like to be overlooked and misunderstood. You know, he knows what it's like to grieve, be sad, and lose loved ones. We read in the New Testament when his friend Lazarus died that Jesus wept. He experienced sadness. He understands. He knows what it's like to be disappointed and let down by friends. The night before Good Friday, he was in the Garden of Gethsemane praying out to God. He knew what the next day held. He knew he was going to hang on a cross. And he took his closest friends, Peter, James and John, with him in that moment because he was facing death. And with that, all the emotions, the anxiety, the fear, the dread that went with that, And what did his closest friends do? They fell asleep. Jesus knows what it's like that in the moments that matter to have no one there with you, to be alone, to have people let you down and disappoint you. We read in Mark 14, he took Peter, James and John along with him and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. He said to them, Jesus was overwhelmed with sorrow. He was facing death. He felt fear, anxiety, all that comes with that, the emotional pain that maybe you even know today. Maybe you've experienced. Jesus knows what that is like. And then the physical pain that came with the death, that he was stripped and humiliated. He was whipped and beaten, a crown of thorns placed on his head. He was nailed to a cross, nails piercing his flesh, where he hung for hours until he suffocated and died. The excruciating pain that he went through for us. Our God, he knows what pain feels like. He is present with us in the pain. And while, yes, he is fully God, he is fully human, he understands. And I believe today that actually God would want us to know he is with us. No matter what we are facing, no matter what you are experiencing, he is with you. I wonder if your own journey, you've ever had a time where in the midst of the absolute darkness and despair, you can say that you know God was with you. You know without a shadow of a doubt that God was there with you because that's my hope and desire for each one of us, that we can know he's there. 12 years ago, we had a miscarriage. And I remember that moment was, I would describe that season in life as feeling really black and dark. I remember the grief that I was overwhelmed with. And a few days after, having to go into hospital for a procedure. And as I lay in the hospital bed in the, the barouche in the, the hallway before going into theatre. My obstetrician came and said to me, and my obstetrician wasn't a believer, wasn't a Christian, a person of faith, but he, he said to me as he saw the grief that I was experiencing, and he said, you of all people, Michelle, you should know you're not alone. And what he didn't realise was just how profound those words were for me. Because I remember in my grief, crying out to God, And in that moment of being alone in a hospital corridor, I felt the tangible presence of the living God. It was as though the person of Jesus was sitting on the barouche next to me. God's presence was with me. God was present in the pain. And when I woke after theatre, yes, I was still grieving, but I knew I wasn't alone. I had this incredible incredible sense of God's peace, that he was present with me and would never leave me. 
I wonder if you've had an experience like that. Because I want to say to you today that our God is present. And no matter what you are going through, I believe He wants you to know He is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Maybe today is the day when it's to stop looking for the band-aid, but to look to Him. Because He's a God who is present in the pain. But so much more than just being present. He's a God who is perfect in the pain. He is absolute perfection because he is God. And so in perfection, he actually overcomes the pain. He has victory over. You know, we read in the Bible where Jesus walked this earth and he had contact with all sorts of people and a leper came out and, and touched him. And rather than Jesus actually catching leprosy, he healed the leper. We read of the woman who was bleeding when she reached out and touched Jesus, the same thing. Jesus was able to heal her. You see, Jesus in his perfection, the pain, the brokenness, the sickness, the disease, the brokenness doesn't overcome him, but rather he overcomes it. He is the one true God, the perfect one. He can overcome everything. Because he is perfection and he is victorious. We read in 2 Corinthians 5, it says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Jesus is the perfect one. He stood in the gap. He rescues us. He just invites us to give to him all our imperfections, all our brokenness, all our pain, the things that we can't make right on our own, the sin, the things that we do or don't do that hurt ourselves and others and God. There's this invitation to come to God, the perfect one, and lay it there at the foot of the cross. But because he's perfect, it doesn't just stay at the cross. Good Friday is seriously just part one of the best ever two-part series the world has ever known. There is more to come. Good Friday is just part one. Jesus rises again from the dead. He is victorious over sin and death. Death is defeated. Reading Colossians 2, you were dead because of your sins and because your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them on the cross. Jesus is perfect in the pain. He is victorious over the pain, the sin, the death. We read in Romans, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. The reality is we're all imperfect. None of us can attain the perfection that is God because we are not him. Yet what we know that is true on Good Friday is Jesus is perfect and he takes our place and he invites us to respond. We simply need to come to him and say, I'm not perfect. I can't be God. I don't want to do it my own way anymore. I bring before you all the things that aren't perfect about me and ask you to forgive me, restore me, heal me, make me whole. I want to follow your way because he is the one who is perfect in the pain. You know, the choice is ours. We choose whether we respond to his invitation. Because you know, when we do, when we say yes to him, there is so much more. There is the potential beyond the pain. Because the reality is we live in a broken, fallen world. There's times when Things happen that seem unfair, unjust. Pain exists and things that I can't explain or make right or fix. We have broken, frail bodies, relationships in the world we live in. But despite that, we have a promise of potential beyond the pain. There is so much more that Jesus promises us. Just as I said, Good Friday is part one, Easter Sunday is part two. Do you know our lives here right now, they're just part one. 
there is a part two to come for each one of us. When Jesus returns, there is more. There is a, a new heaven and a new earth that he promises us where there will be no more pain. There will be no more tears. In Revelation, we read, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there'll be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain and all these things are gone forever. No more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying. There is a promise of things to come. In a lot of ways, it's, it's like a sunrise. If you're an early riser, I confess I am not, <laughs> but if you're an early riser, you might have caught some of the beautiful sunrises that we've seen of late. And this moment where there's darkness, but then the light breaks through. The light breaks through and just starts to change things, just cracks of light. And we see things appear. And yes, there's still darkness, but there's cracks of light breaking through. In a lot of ways, that is what we're living right now, the now and the not yet, there is still darkness. There is still brokenness. There is still pain and sorrow, but the light is breaking through. The presence of Jesus is breaking through. The promise of him, his perfection is breaking through. And one day, it won't just be a sunrise, it'll be overwhelming light because he promises to come back. There is more. And so my hope and my prayer for each one of us this Good Friday is that we'd know we have a God that's present. We would respond to his perfection. And we'd maybe lift our eyes to the potential that there is more. I love the sunrise as a daily event, hey? It's almost like our God wants to remind us each day, hey, I'm here, there's more to come. My light is breaking through every day, every morning without fail. The sun will rise. He is coming back. His light is breaking through. Our God is present with us. Let's pray. Oh God, I want to thank you that you are here. Thank you for what Good Friday means. For the reality of your sacrifice for us and the opportunity we have to know you, to experience you, to be forgiven by you and walk with you. I really want to take this time right now to pray for those that maybe you've never said yes to Jesus. Whether you're online or whether you're in the room and maybe as you heard me share today, you realize that there's a perfect God that wants to forgive everything. He's inviting you into a relationship with him and our response simply is to come before him and say sorry and say yes. And I wonder if that's you today, for the first time you want to say yes to Jesus, or maybe you found yourself walking away. It's been a long time, and today is a marker where you say, I'm coming back. I'm sorry. I want to say yes to Jesus and walk his way. And so if that's you, I want to ask you just to raise a hand. If you're online, there's a raise a hand button. We'd love you to hit that, fill in your details. If you want to say yes to Jesus, do that just now. And if you're in the room, I'd ask the same. If you open your eyes, look at me. Just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for and I can get a Bible in your hands and give you some information, help you know Jesus. So whether you're online or in the room today, if you want to say yes to Jesus, whether it's the first time or you want to come back home to Him today, this Good Friday, I just want to encourage you to raise your hand now, to hit the raise a hand button or to physically just look at me and raise a hand and say, yes, I choose you, Jesus. I choose you. Oh God, I want to thank you. Thank you for those that are raising their hand. Those that are saying, you are the perfect one. I trust you and I love you. And I'll say yes to following you. I'm just going to pray a short prayer. And if that's you today, if you've raised your hand, you want to respond, I encourage you just to pray this prayer in your heart right now. Oh God, I thank you that you came to this earth you died for me, that you rose again. I'm sorry for the things I've done. Thank you that you are the perfect one. Please forgive me. I choose to follow you and follow your ways. Amen. We're going to
continue to respond in a time of communion. And so I want to encourage you that if you've got the bread and the juice here with you now, maybe to hold those and have a look at them. If you're at home, you want to grab your bread and juice. If anyone in the room hasn't got the bread and juice, if you can pop your hand up high, our welcome team will come and find you. Just keep your hand up until someone brings you some bread and juice. But as we take this time to reflect, I want to encourage you that everyone's invited. Everyone's invited, whether you're on the beginning of knowing Jesus or whether you have known Him forever, whether you just raised a hand and said yes to Him today. Everyone's invited. And as we take the bread and the juice, we're going to have some time to reflect. We're going to hold the bread and the juice and ask God to speak to us and continue to stir us. I want to read from the Bible where it talks about what occurred at the Last Supper. It says, On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and you, sealed by the shedding of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. I wonder what God has been saying to you. As you hold the bread and the juice in this moment, is He reminding you that He's present? Maybe you're going through a painful situation. He's saying, just as He was with those disciples, He is here today. He is with you today. Maybe He's saying, as as you look at the bread and juice, I'm with you. Or maybe for others, there's this sense of an overwhelming knowledge that He is perfect and we are not. That it's only the perfection of His broken body and poured out blood that's changed us. And maybe today is a moment of bringing to Him our imperfections, saying, forgive us, restore us, thank you for who you are. Or maybe it's a moment where God is reminding you with the bread and the juice, just as the sunrise, that there's more to come. We read, it says, each time we do this, we're announcing the Lord's death until He comes again. He's coming back. There is encourage you just to hold the bread and the juice. We're going to take them together in a moment, but as the team sing a song over us, to acknowledge it's His battle. He is with us in the battle. Ask Him to speak to you now as you hold the bread and the juice and allow just to focus on the cross. When all I see is the battle You see my Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. Every fear. 
your name. We thank you that you are the risen King. We thank you that today is part one. We acknowledge that you are present, that you take our pain, that you fight the battle and we can trust you. We bless you, King Jesus. Why don't we stand together and actually join in and worship our King. joining us this Good Friday. We want to encourage you, if you said yes to Jesus, if you raised a hand online, if you make sure you fill in that button and we can actually send to you a, a grab and go pack or a Bible, we'd love to equip you. If you're in the room and you raised your hand or you want to know more about Jesus, at the door we have grab and go packs. No questions asked. If you just want to know a little bit about more about Jesus, but you don't want a conversation yet, that's okay. Grab and go. It's yours. We also have Bibles. We would love to walk with you and help you know more about God. We have coming up an Alpha course. It starts on May the 6th, 7.30, Thursday nights, and it's a Zoom Alpha. Super easy, whether you're online or in the room, you're all invited. If you want to know about this, head to the point or clovy.com.au forward slash connect, because this is a great opportunity, a six-week course to participate in to know more about Jesus. Maybe for those that have friends you want to invite and ask to that. Great way to know more. And I want to encourage you, we have our Easter Sunday services, 9am and 11am. And then following that, we're starting a four-week series around the things that God never said. If you've ever wondered what God never said, it's going to be an interesting series as we look at the things God never said and learn a bit more about our God. So if you're intrigued by that, we look forward to inviting you back. Head out, enjoy a hot cross bun on us, or if you're at home, Make your own hot cross bun and have a great Easter.